Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio. If you're on blogtalkradio.com front slash Gypsy Poet, I am the Gypsy Poet, and of course with me is the feisty and ever crazy and mysterious Girl George. Yes, people, Girl George, say it with me. Girl George, Girl George, Girl George, Girl George, oh my God, what a guest. And we have a wild Sunday afternoon with the one and only... Wild Willard from Dr. Hook in the Medicine Show and Goose Creek Symphony. What an amazing ride this is going to be. <laughs> you must have played that doing? one 10 million times when you were with Dr. Hook, right? Oh, yeah. I played, played it a few times. <laughs> I toured with them in 1973, but you didn't join them to about, what, 76? Yeah, 76, uh, although we did meet... Um, in the early 70s when, you know, they had uh, Sylvia's mother out and they were touring in the South. Um, that was when I was playing with the Goose Creek Symphony. We did a, a number of shows together. So you and, met me? Uh, uh, you know, I'm surprised that we never did meet, George, but um, I met Star. You met Star? We're in Nashville. Yeah, in Nashville. Oh, because she went back to Nashville after we broke up and I stayed in San Francisco, so you probably met her there. Yeah. That's that would be about right. So. Yeah, we toured with Doctor Hook right after they had the cover of the Rolling Stones was a big hit, and uh, Shel Silverstein found us at the Red Dog Saloon in Nashville and said, "Oh, you should be with my producer because you guys are crazy and he's crazy." So, <laughs> so he introduced us to Ron Hafkin. We came back to San Francisco and went on the road with Doctor Hook doing one of our songs in the middle of it, and they backed us up. So that oh, was a whole great. bunch of fun. Those are crazy guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's funny, too, but by the time I got in the band, everybody was a little older, and, uh, you know, we still had our share of fun, but uh, for the most part, uh, it, it, you know, it settled down into a lot of work. <laughs> oh, they were they were real young then, boy, party all night, we never got any sleep, you know, we, we'd do the, do the show, and then afterwards we'd go out and make a bunch of noise and raise hell, and then we have to get up at at five o'clock in the morning or something, and and nine year would drag us to airplanes and put tags on us so we'd know where we were going because we had no idea. We'd be on planes all day. We'd get off the planes and then take Dennis and, and Ray over to the radio studio, studio to do an interview, and then back on another stage again. But we were playing yeah. with Chuck Berry, Stevie Wonder, Black Oak oh, Arkansas. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was a, no, that was the same circuit I was on with uh, when I was with Goose Creek. Yeah, that, that was a dream come it. true, those big concerts, you know, with all my heroes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, you were with Goose Creek Symphony, Symphony for how long? Uh, well, actually, I'm still with the band. And oh, you you started, go back and forth with them, huh? <laughs> yeah, the, the band started in 1968 here in Phoenix, and um, we uh, just started in the studio with, uh, you know, no real prospects or anything. We just started recording um, Charlie Gerhardt's original songs and it turned into an album which eventually got picked up by Capitol Records and uh, by 1970 we were out on our first tour with Bobby Gentry wow. and uh, played the Ed Sullivan show that year um, <laughs> and then I didn't I didn't go off the road for the next 10 years. <laughs> 300 <laughs> days of the year, 10 years straight. <laughs> So how did you end up with Dr. Hook? Did they steal you from Goose Creek Symphony? Well, in in 1975, uh, Goose Creek disbanded for uh, we needed a much needed break, and uh, two of the guys moved up to the Northwest, and uh, um, that was right when Rick Ellswit uh, was diagnosed with melanoma, and uh, one of the, the one of the fellas, Well, he's yes, a redhead. Redheads have a problem with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because they're so fair. Yeah, but um, he was diagnosed, and one one of the people that worked in our uh, organization, with Goose Creek, uh, Ted Hacker, was uh, at that time working in Doctor Hook's office, and uh, they were wondering, you know, uh, who were they going to get to replace Rick while Rick was out of commission? And uh, Ted suggested they call me because he knew that you know Goose Creek was done for a while, and uh, I got the call and. Uh, it was like a week later. I was out on the road. <laughs> In fact, I think I was doing that Don Kirshner rock concert thing that I've seen. Oh, so that's that great. was one of my first gigs. <laughs> how, how did you like John Walton as a drummer? He's a tourist just like you. Oh yeah, I love John. 
I love John. Well, John, so you, here, they got him from away. me. They got John from me. Because, I know. I, uh, I read that. Yeah. Right when we were going off the road with Dr. Hook, uh, that's right when Ray, I mean, uh, Jay quit. And they yeah. need a drummer really quick because they, they, they were on tour, you know. So yeah. I said, well, why don't you use my drummer in Nashville? I ain't using him, you know. And so I played him my demo that one of Shades of Green and Blue, and, and Ron says, get him. And, and so I yeah. called Nashville, and he wasn't there, so I called New York and found him in New York. I said, get your ass out here, Ron. Sent him a ticket. And he stayed with Dr. Hook for for years. <laughs> yeah, pr- pretty much to, to the end. Because you know, he learned it in like in, in a week. He he knew he was good. He, he he learned all this stuff, and they were back out on the road again. Yeah, well, John was dedicated, and, and he contributed so much to the band. It was, you know, I was privileged to have been able to play with him. Well, he could do anything. I mean, I could just... He could just watch me and, and follow where I was moving, you know, you know, just watch your ass moving and, and go with it because I change around a whole lot, and he could go with anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Doctor Hook were kind of that way too. They were crazy. They go off off the wall and bounce off the wall and do all kinds of weird, bizarre stuff. And the drummer has to be able to go with it. Yep, absolutely. How many gold records did you get? Uh, you know, I probably have a, a couple of dozen, you know, gold, silver, and platinum <laughs> albums. From both groups um, or just Dr. Hook? Uh, just from Dr. Hook, yeah. That was that was my time to, to you know, go around the world a few times and uh, play on some top ten records, uh, you know, like Sharing the Night Together and When You're In Love With a Beautiful Woman and Sexy Eyes and those records. Um, it was like getting to play... Um, with the studio players that we used for those albums was fabulous. The Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section and the, the A Team in Nashville, and it was uh, you know all of those dreams that you have when you're growing up, you know, fortunately came true for me. <laughs> yeah, you get to play with all your heroes, and you get to play on rock concert and Ed Sullivan, and get gold records. My goodness, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I work at a, you know playing music at a Mexican food restaurant down the street from my house. <laughs> well, that's cool. You still get to play. I get to play, and that's that's all you need. You only need is a few people out there that are digging it, and that's all you need. You know, that's, you don't have right. to have fifty thousand people out in front of you all the time. That gets a like little hectic. Yeah, well, I, I lost two, two families being on the road, so I've yep. learned my lesson. <laughs> What was it like working with Shel Silverstein, actually? I love Shel. He, he was just a, a one-of-a-kind person. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, he, you know, he wrote the song uh, "A Boy Named Sue" that Johnny Cash did. He oh, actually yeah. wrote a he actually wrote oh. a sequel to that called "The Father of a Boy Named Sue." And I've seen Goose it. Creek, yep, Goose Creek Symphony recorded it. Oh really? Um, unfortunately. <laughs> We, I don't have a copy of it. I wish I did because it was ten times funnier than the original song. <laughs> well, it's up on YouTube, but I think it's got Doctor Hook doing it. Yeah, that's uh, you know I haven't seen that actually. Well, I'll just put out. it in there right in there. It's up on YouTube. I've seen it before. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, it was a funny tune, and and just you know getting to getting to sit down with Shell while he was playing the song. You know, it's he, he wasn't the best singer <laughs> there is, <laughs> and uh, you just kind of had to kind of had to know him to pick out the melody. You know, as he was playing the tune to you, but <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that unicorn song, that that Irish song, that the yeah, Irish, the Irish guy did, did the, the yeah, unicorn song. Yeah, he wrote a yeah. lot of songs that we didn't even know about. I know. I mean, he told me he says, "I just you know, songwriting's a hobby." <laughs> I said, yeah, well, everything was a hobby. hobby with him. He did everything. He was a jack of all trades, and they were all hobbies. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he loved to write poems and songs and just have a good time. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I That's think right. his profession was having a good time. <laughs> oh, yes, I have I, I have his entire collection, okay? I grew up with Shel Silverstein. That's why I had to ask that question, because the moment I saw that Dr. Hook uh, had songs that were written by Shel Silverstein. I just had to. I just had to knock that question in there because I I loved his material growing up. That's why. So I had to throw that oh, in yeah. there. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, I saw that you have actually a um, a, a, um, a top five album, and I, I wanted to ask about that from Denmark. I wanted to ask when when that first came out a little bit more. Uh, no, excuse me, that was in the UK, it was number five, but in Denmark it came out to number one. It was in 1976. Were you working on that album? A little I, bit more. I played on. I played. That was the album right before I joined the band. But I did play mm-hmm. on one of the tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, one of the last Goose Creek sessions during the 1970s, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we were working with uh, Kyle Lenning, who was uh, a protege of of Ron Hafkins at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, we. We finished recording this stuff for Goose Creek, and Kyle says, "I've got this other track, you know that you know I'd like you to put some guitar on." And it turns out it was one; of, it was a Doctor Hook track. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I did end up playing something on that album, but I wasn't in the band yet. Mm, I see. Um, what about some uh, the, the the next one uh, in uh, nine? I think it was nineteen seventy seven, "Making Love and Music." I wanted to ask about that one. How um, how was it working on that album? Um, that was the first full album that that I played mm-hmm. on with, with the band, ah. and uh, um, uh, we did that in Nashville, I believe, at uh, Studio by the Pond, Lee oh. Hazen's studio, which was a uh, studio at his house out on Old Hickory Lake, which was really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had worked with uh, with Ron Hafkin on the mm-hmm. fourth Goose Creek album. So I was familiar with Ronnie and and his uh, you know style of production. What did he produce the Goose Creek uh, album? Yeah, he produced an album for Goose Creek, the uh, the one album that we had on Columbia Records uh, called oh, cool. Making Love and Music. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, not Making Love and Music. Uh, Do your thing, but don't touch mine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know. It, it was nice, you know, it was, it was great getting to work with Dennis, too. I mean, I've, I've always had a great time playing with Dennis. Oh, and, Dennis uh, got such a great voice. I can't believe it. It's just amazing, his voice. Yeah, and he, and he's a talented musician as well. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's and, funny uh, as hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I, I told him, since if you ever stop playing music, you could always do just go do stand-up comedy. <laughs> yeah, he's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Um so tell me a little bit more about other projects that you're doing currently. Are you working on anything now? Uh, n- nothing in earnest. Just uh, basically, mm-hmm. I'm a you know hired gun. <laughs> if somebody needs me to play, you know, then I go and play for them. You're doing um, that duet thing, aren't you, at the club? Yeah, or that's that's been my regular. Um, what is pizza parlors or something? Yeah, it's at, at a Mexican food restaurant down the Same street. Same difference. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's it's a. I've been doing it for eight years, and the fellow that I play with, Alan Harkrader, is he and I are I have a, just a great rapport musically. We sing alike, and uh, if if I know some of the some of the song and he knows some of the song, we can play the song. It's not you know it's it's. So it's just the two of you. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Two guitars, yeah. or does he play bass? Uh, Alan plays guitar, bass, and keyboards. And sings. He plays bass pedals with his feet, uh-huh. and uh, guitar, electric guitar, and uh, we use the drum machine and in, in the keyboard as our drummer. So and, where are you uh, from originally? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was born in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And moved, yeah, moved to Arizona in 1964. And uh, this, when I got here, I was 13 years old, and I've been playing music all my life. And playing basically had a Hammond organ in the living room. Well, the whole time I was growing up, <clears throat> when we moved to Arizona, my dad had to take the organ out to his gig, so I didn't have a musical instrument to play when we got here. So your father was a musician too. Yes, and and his father before him. Really? What in, in clubs or what? Um, yeah, theater. My grandfather played theater pipe organ for the silent movies, and then played in nightclubs. Wow. And then my dad played mm-hmm. nightclubs. That's how he raised the family, you know. And between that and teaching music. Um, what did your mother do? Did she work or? Uh... No, she was a, a quintessential 1950s housewife. <laughs> How many kids in the family? There, there was four of us. Four. You the oldest yeah. or youngest? I'm in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. We have girls or boys in the family? 
uh, two boys and two girls. Well, that's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, 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 it was a, you know, I had a decent upbringing, and uh, my childhood was uh, relatively calm. <laughs> Uh, you know, it got, a, it got a little shakier when I got, you know, was a teenager, of course. <laughs> you know, once, once I got into a rock and roll band, and, and uh, people that I was playing music with here in in Phoenix uh, is kind of a San Francisco connection. It's the guys that became the Tubes. <laughs> the Tubes. Prairie Prince, Prairie Prince and Roger Steen were. We were all in my second band together oh, here cool. in Phoenix, and cool. uh, that. They merged with another band here in town uh, that had Bill Spooner and Rick Anderson and Vince Welnick in it, and that's when they became the Tubes. I remember that band actually. <laughs> I, I do remember this band. It, it just because my brother he was he was a big he's big into rock and roll. That's why. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, well, you're, you're actually taking me back through time here. Song like like you yeah. make my pants want to get up and dance and you make my <laughs> blue jeans talk. Who wrote those suckers? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know I don't I don't know. They walk right because I know at about that time they quit doing <laughs> shell songs and did everyone else's because at first they were just doing Shel Silverstein songs, and then somehow they all fell apart when when Clive Davis got fired from Columbia, and the whole thing kind of blew up, and that's about when we left. And uh, then then they came back with uh, uh, You're 16, the yeah, six, you're only one about 16, 16, and they went back that's up true. again, so they had two rides going up to the top. Yeah. And then they did that, you know, sharing the night together and uh, uh, I'll Love You Just a Little Bit More. That was the sexiest song I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. right about when you were coming in, right? Yeah. Yep, that was exactly the, the time period. I, and I that's when they went kind of disco, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's what was happening at the time. Yeah, I know, too. that's where so the music Ronnie, went you know, and they, they were a heavy-duty disco. <laughs> Ronnie's production was, you know, leaning towards that because, you know, that's what was making money at the time. And, uh, you know, I don't know if everybody agreed, you know, with that direction, but, you know, it, it wasn't really all that hard to to play. So Well, know. it got you gold records, so. Yeah. That's true. That was <laughs> I wasn't good. complaining. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the one that actually you know, the thing is that all the so- all the songs on those albums weren't all like disco tunes. It was you know, yeah, I know. a wide variety. But the and, ones that hit were because that's what was selling at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. George, you actually posted a song earlier, uh, earlier I think uh, yesterday. It was called "When You're Love with When You're in Love with a Beautiful Woman." I well, bet that's, that song that's just... one of the ones he was on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet that that song just that just, that song just tickled me when I heard that. I was like, "Wow, that that is that is beautiful lyricism there." I I, yeah. wanted to, I just wanted to yeah I wanted to touch up on that song because when I heard that one, I was like, "Wow, now this is a song where wow, <laughs> just still leaves me speechless." It's really a good song. Yeah, and, 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 uh, yeah that was that, mm-hmm. that was that was written by a fellow by the name of Even Stevens. Oh, I knew <laughs> him in that. Nashville. Yeah, yeah, a little, uh, yeah, I knew him. <laughs> I don't know if he wrote any other tunes that, that, you know, became hits. I know that I've seen his name on a, on some other albums, but I think that, you know, When You're In Love With A Beautiful Woman was the only big hit that he had. Well, he was part of the gang in, in Nashville when we first got there in the 70s, you know, like right. Christopherson and Vince Matthews and even Stevens and Chris Gantry and all of them. How about that one about I Wish I Could Make It More Like the Movies for You? Were you in that on that one? Uh, no, that was before I was in That was band. before you? That was yeah. a cool song. <laughs> yeah, we played that a number of times on stage. Yeah, uh, it's a real heartbreaker. Songs that, yeah, quite a few of those songs that uh, would surface every now and then and that they'd end up in the set. But uh, there was a lot of tunes to choose from. You know, so, cool. did, so did Dennis and, and Ray get, get over being sick of Sylvia's mother? Because I know when they were with us, they hated that song. They they go out and make fun of it. They wouldn't do it for real because they hated it because they had to do it so many times. Did they ever get over that? You know, I, Dennis, when I was in the band, Dennis would do that by himself. He would go just do Sylvia as a solo. Well, that's and, good. Uh, that's good because yeah, it's a real sweet song. I never song. heard him complain, you know. So I guess he it's got over it. Things. 
I mean, it was like, uh, I guess he did get over it. <laughs> I mean, I, I played with Glenn Campbell for six years, and he played all of his hits every oh, show. Oh, I love Glenn Campbell. He's and, great. He's amazing. And he, uh, he always smiled and, uh, you know, never once complained that he had to play that song for the millionth time, you know, by the time I get to Phoenix or any of them. Yeah. You know, did so you do Dreams of the Everyday Housewife? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Chris Gantry great. wrote that one. Yeah, that's a great song. You know Chris song. Gantry? Yes. I don't know yeah. him personally, but I know who Well, he's no friend from Nashville. Yeah. That was his biggest hit that somebody else did was was that one. Yeah. That was that's a good, good song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're going to be playing with Goose Creek Symphony again? Uh, yeah, actually we're doing a festival in Missoula, Montana on August uh, 25th. Or is it 24th? It's uh, Saturday, the 24th of August, and uh, I think that's our only show this year. <laughs> and then you'll be back with your duets band? Yep, yep I'll be back down here in the in the desert and uh, go ride my horse and go play music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot you're a cowboy, aren't you? Yeah, well, not really a cowboy, but I a have a horse. A pretend cowboy, you got a horse. Yeah, you get a horse, had that's him good enough. 14 years, and uh, he's, he's my pal. <clears throat> that's awesome. That's what you get when you live in the desert. <laughs> Are you married now? You got kids? Uh, I have children from previous marriages. <laughs> I have two boys. I've got a, a 42 year old son and a 32 wow. year old son. <laughs> wow, they're grown up. Oh, yep. my kids are like 36. <laughs> I got grandkids. <laughs> I'm older than you, I think. I, I'm I'm like 69 years old, so I think I'm a yeah. few years older than you. Yeah. Yeah, I was older than Dr. Of... Hook by a couple of years. Yeah, well, Ray's in his 70s now, isn't he? Huh? Ray's I don't know. Is. I think he yeah. is, but I think Dennis was younger than me. Dennis is a year older than I am, so he's 63. So he's a lot younger than me. Yeah. He was about, yeah. he was about Star's age, because Star was five years younger than me. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, um, in 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 the set that you play uh, presently at the gig that you do now, do you do you play any old songs from uh, from Doctor Hook? You know, the only one that I I do occasionally is "Sharing the Night Together." That's a ah. cool song. And the, yeah. and every now and then, uh, Alan knows the words to "Cover the Rolling Stone." Every now and then, we'll do "Cover the Rolling Stone." <laughs> I think those are those are the only two that we do. <laughs> That's a funny song. Yeah, it's it's just hard to you know it's hard to do justice to to songs that you've heard Dennis Lagorier sing. It's oh like, my God! Especially the sixteen one, when he hits that note at the end, it's just like my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's in London now, right? Uh, yeah, he's been living in Eng- in England for quite some time. Uh, you know, every now and then I email him to see how he's doing and. Uh, you know, I'd love to see him again, but I'm not planning on being in England anytime soon. So, <laughs> is he touring or anything? Have you heard anything about that? I think he does a couple of tours a year over there. Um, he does have a website, you know, of course. Uh, yeah, has I, all I, the information I know his website. On it, but, yeah. Yeah. Anybody but, uh, who wants to find him, you can just put his name in there. He's got a big website. Yeah, and for the most part, he, I think he does his uh, shows or solos. Um, every every now and then he has a band that he puts together over there to take out. But, uh, you know, I just what about just Ray? Is Ray happy, still touring? You know? Is Ray still uh, yeah, touring? Yeah, Ray is still touring. He's uh, from what I see on the internet, he's got uh, you know he's doing the casino circuit, kind of cool. like a lot of other acts. <laughs> yeah. I did That's what you do when you retire is you, you go to Vegas or Reno and just camp out like Elvis did. <laughs> Make yeah, the money. Yeah, except now you've got all the Indian casinos and they all want entertainment, you know, and of course oh, yeah. anybody with a name is you know, that they'll hire you. That's great. <laughs> Dennis should do that. Dennis could could sit around and make some money, just just play it in Vegas or, or the Indian casinos or wherever. 
Yeah, I I don't know when when he was in the states last. Yeah, I know. I don't know why he moved to England. I, he liked it there. Yeah, right. well, I, you he's, know, he's written for me him, a couple times, and he said he liked London. Is. Huh? Yeah, that's his, that's where his, the work is for him. You know, I mean, he's, oh, he's he worked there, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know today's Kim Fowley's birthday? You know Kim Fowley? Uh, no, I don't. He's the one that, that produced uh, uh, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Oh, oh, okay. And his, the name sounded familiar, but I wasn't, I wasn't yeah, clear. Yeah, today's his birthday. He's like about 83 or something. <laughs> no, he's, it says he's 74, but I think he's more like 83. George, you hit home with me right there. You hit home with me right in the heart right Joan there. Jett. Joan Jett. Well, I think he also Jett. did... They're coming to take me away, ha ha, he he ho ho, to the funny farm. Mm-hmm. I think somebody else did it too, but he did that. He's a crazy yeah, but, guy. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that song. <laughs> <laughs> well, he ain't the one that made the big hit out of it, but he put it out too. Some other yeah. guy. Had, I did had want to ask. I, I did want to ask him where did the name Wild Willard come from because it it does ring it, it does it does ring in, in the ears a bit so I wanted to ask how that came about. Well, Willard came from high school. It, it was mm-hmm. a, um, a joke I had ended up playing on myself, and uh, okay. when I when I joined the Goose Creek Symphony, Charlie Gerhardt, the guy that started that band, is from the Appalachia in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And uh, nicknames are everything back there. Everybody has yeah. a, a nickname: Polecat, uh, Flea Bob. Uh, you know, you name it. Yeah. They've yeah. got funny <laughs> names. Well, when yeah. he heard somebody call me Willard, it stuck. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been Willard oh. ever since. And Wild uh-huh. Willard actually came from when when uh, I was touring with Goose Creek, and we had our mm-hmm. own uh, Silver Eagle bus, and mm-hmm. I was one of the drivers, and that was my CB handle you know, on the radio. Yeah. Talking to truck mm. drivers, you know, Wild Willard. So that stuck as well. When I so your real name it, is what? It's uh, Bob Hinky. Hinky. H e n k e. Who is uh, that? Most, most people call me Willard. Yeah. So Willard's got nothing to do with your name. Just like George has nothing to do with my name. I just right. made it up because it started out as a joke and. It's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the Be same. Be careful boat. <laughs> about what you joke about, because you might end up with it forever. That's right. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's hard for my daughter to call me George, and my grandkids to call me George, but that's just the way it is. And my boyfriends, that's even worse. They hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he always makes me laugh. Okay, we got the two minutes left, left, so if you yeah. gotta plug anything, plug it. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, just plug life. <laughs> Your latest gig at the at the at yeah. the Mexican restaurant. Tell us where it's at. Yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. at Manuel's Mexican restaurant, uh, eighty-eight zero nine, uh, East Mountain View Road in Scottsdale, Arizona. Friday and Saturday nights, seven p.m. to eleven p.m. And, uh, Alan and I will. Play any song you want us to play. If we know it, we can do it. If we don't know it, we'll make it up. <laughs> <laughs> and your Goose Creek Symphony one is where? Uh, that's a, a festival, and I'm not sure what the name of the festival is. It's in Missoula, Montana. Uh, we'll be playing Saturday, uh, the 24th of August. And uh, you know, if you're up there, come on by. <laughs> well, it was great talking to you, Willard. Oh, it was terrific yeah. talking with you, too, finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally. We talk all the time on the web, and then I made those videos for you to put up on YouTube. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm yeah. sorry, I, and I apologize for, for not being able to convert those songs I sent you, but I tried. Well, that's all right. Somebody switched it to it MP3 for me. It was okay. Yeah. I have a friend that knows how to do that. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> I couldn't. I just it email it to him, and then he sends he sends it back to me as a MP3 because he knows how to. Do, I don't know how to do that. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> well, thank All you very right. much. This has been very nice. 
Yes, it has been. What a great afternoon with with none other than Wild Willard and, of course, girl George, my wing gal. What a crazy, crazy afternoon this is. Oh, what an adventure going back in time and visiting some of the greatest songs that have ever been written in my mind and more. Please, guys, check out this show afterwards. Also, please check out Wild Willard on Facebook and numerous other pages. And when you go back and listen and pick up the uh, p- um, pick up the gig that's coming uh, that he does every um, every Friday and Saturday evening over at the at this wonderful place that he was talking about. And also, thank you guys so much for listening in on Gypsy Poet Radio. I am the Gypsy Poet, and of course, I am signing off saying to Girl George and Mr. W- w- Wild Wild Willard, <laughs> Dr. Hook, and Gift Creek Symphony. Check them out on the web when you can. And I'm signing off saying adios for now. Ciao. Adios.